but considering where we were, I don't think it was such a bad effort. James, our performance by the Australian share market and a really good effort given the losses that we are seeing around the region. In fact, if we look to Japan, we're seeing a loss of 2.3% there and the Korean Cosby is down by 1.3%. In comparison, the Australian market has finished quite flat and if you strip out the uh, material space and the energy space, well, the market's not looking too bad. Of course, the weakness was from the material space today. Not surprising given that the market was focusing in on the Fed's comments overnight and that really helped to kill gold off overnight. We saw stocks like Newcrest down by 2.4% and the big miners also a drag BHP down by 1.3%. But outside of the miners, we saw strength in the telecom sector, the healthcare sector, as well as the financial sector. In fact, QBE, a star performer on our market with a rise of 3.4%. The market really gaining some confidence from the comments from the annual general meeting which was held in Sydney today. But of course on the flip side, Transfield very much in focus, it falling 11.7% uh, today back on the back of that profit downgrade. But all in all, not a bad session for the Australian share market given the Fed's comments overnight, uh, the markets around the region as well as the trade deficit numbers that we've seen here domestically. Push into the US dollar, uh, obviously the reaction from the Aussie dollar pushing down, that was compounded with that trade data we got. I mean a really sharp reaction from the Aussie dollar. We did see quite a big reaction in terms of the Aussie dollar today, falling below 103 US cents. And just to see how sharp that move has been in the Aussie dollar over the last month, if we have a look at a one-year chart of the Aussie versus the US currency, this is what it looks like. And you can see that very sharp downtrend which is in place for the Aussie dollar. So it does look like we will be testing parity quite soon. It doesn't help that, you know, the market's now pricing in a May rate cut unless we see a shocking inflation number on the 24th of April. And then today the trade deficit numbers, the second month of a deficit when the market was expecting to see a surplus of $1.1 billion. So that really pointing some weak to some weakness in the Australian economy. And having a look at those numbers, one of the things that really tumbled down were coal exports, which were down by about 16%. So it looks like the impact of the weather as well as the strikes we've been seeing in this area having an impact there. And then, of course, the Federal Reserve minutes coming out overnight and the impact that that, that had in terms of the U.S. dollar. It's interesting to get the view of some of the investment houses out there in terms of uh, the FOMC minutes and the possibility of QE3. While the minutes were quite clear that uh, there wouldn't be further easing unless things softened in the US. It does look like investment houses are still betting on QE3. We have a look at Goldman Sachs. Uh, they came out to say that their baseline scenario is for more asset purchases and in terms of a timing point they're predicting June. If we have a look at RBS they're saying uh, a greater than even chance of QE3 and they, they think that it would be at the June meeting as well. And if we have a look at Citi they've come out to say uh, that the reflection of the minutes is of the FOMC uh, minutes and uh, the FOMC members and not necessarily an accurate reflection um, and I guess the risk is that the market reads uh, the statement as too hawk hawkish in comparison to Ben Bernanke's comments. So it's interesting seeing those minutes and the difference in the views of the investment houses but altogether all that was bad news for the Aussie. What are the likes of Goldman's basing that on? I mean I'll be honest it seems extraordinary to me the, the run of US data we've had in general has been pretty good. You've got some people on the Fed plosser to, to make you know to single someone out actually wants to see interest rate increases well before the end of, two, of 2014. The idea of some sort of further bond purchasing some sort of QE3 by June or July seems to me extraordinary. I guess it's a question of whether the U.S. Uh, recovery is sustainable without the, uh, more quantitative easing or more easing coming through from the Fed. Um, so in terms of this statement it looks like the interpretation by different investment houses have, have been that it's more a reflection of the FOMC members than uh, the possibility of QE3. But in terms of the market reaction, a very clear signal that, uh, that they're pushing out uh, the possibility of a QE3 or the probability of QE3. We saw that in the reaction from uh, not only gold prices but silver prices which were down by around about 2%. The US dollar strengthened about 0.6%. And if we have a look at treasuries rising uh, 13 basis points in terms of yield. So the market reaction and the different comments coming through from the investment houses a very strong divergence there. So it is going to be interesting to see whether the US economy can sustain this recovery without further easing from the Fed. Uh, the US and the potential for QE3 all day indeed. We're probably going to talk about it a little bit later in the show. I want to touch on some corporate news around. It's been a pretty light week, Julia, for, for big corporate news. However, there was some today. QBE, their AGM, they seem a little bit more upbeat about the, uh, the future in terms of this year as they were about 2011, describing as one of the worst years on record for catastrophic events. 
Well, last year was a horror year for QB insurance, but it looks like 2012 is off to a much better start. And if we have a look, uh, there haven't been any huge, uh, large loss events in 2012 so far. And if we have a look at the credit markets, well, we've seen the spreads um, narrowing as well. So if we have a look at the credit markets altogether, it's been good news for QB insurance and probably a boost of about 1% there. We've also seen premiums start to rise, and that's really going to hit the second, second half numbers of QBE. And it's good to see them re iterating their uh, their guidance as well so altogether it was great news for QB insurance share price which is up by 3.4 percent uh, around about a month ago we were talking about that breakout that mm. we saw from around about that $11 mark with a target of about $14.50 and we're at that mark now and I guess the market now focusing on on the future which is looking quite bright for QB insurance in comparison to last year and Julie